Hi pottery peeps. We're back for another kiln opening. Um, it's been a pretty dang good week. Probably one of the best I've had in over a year. So that gives me hope that um, life's going to get better because I my hope was really, really tiny with these stupid knees with everything that was happening. So let's get to the kiln opening and this is, um, most of it's mine. So I've got the deviled egg trays in here, so let's go ahead. I already see a problem with one. We are still a little warm. I have one little tiny pinhole there. So I'll, I'll fire this one again. I don't, oh, nope, I got two. So this is a new glaze to me. <laughs> well, it's three different glazes. This is the Spectrum Kiwi, and um, it's got potential. Don't like the pinholes, but it's got potential. And it's not a lot of pinholes, but I did layer this with Blue Spark by Amico. And then I put Pearl White from um, Spectrum on this too, um, because I've been watching, of course, the whole last year, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. And I believe it was, um, oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I think it might have been Sarah Walton. Yes, check her out. She uses the Pearl White by Spectrum, I believe. Ugh, don't, um, I'm not totally sure. And it um, says that the Pearl White is super, super runny. So um, I'm kind of using it as a flux. And I really, really like what it did. I mean, look, look at all that color in there. Um, minus the pinhole. <laughs> so I did um, like, Two coats of the um, kiwi, and then one thick coat of the blue spark, and then two coats of the pearl white, and I only went to here with the pearl white, and look at all of that yumminess. So I think deviled eggs will look really cool on this. I will um, fire this one again, because I've got uh, pinholes. I should check this one, and No pinholes on the big one, so no pinholes, but I was afraid of this. I do have a slight crack in the center, and that's because I decided to put the hole in it when it was too dry, so don't do that. Um, it's not the, the stand that I plan to put these on because these are gonna be like this. Um, so when I put them together, it might cover that. So we'll see. And I will, if I put a, put them together, I will put a video at the end. Or not a video, but a picture of, at the end. So this is actually a refire. And I can't get the cookies off. So um, it didn't have enough glaze in the center. So this is Savannah's, her butter dish. So I poured more glaze in the center. And this is a cone six firing. Cone six gets a lot hotter. Things tend to move a lot more, which makes it super, super exciting. Um, so I did put it up on some cookies just in case. Oh, see, I got them off. Okay, good. Cookies off. Woo. So we'll see how other things went in here. Boy, this looks promising. So this is just a tray that I made. Um, and I did, um, <laughs> Chung Plum, two coats. Then I did two coats of the blue rutile, and then I did one coat of the honey flux. So you can tell two coats of the blue rutile was a little thin on the back, but I don't mind it. I don't mind that it goes brown, but that's really pretty. It did cover up a lot of the texture in the middle, but I still think it looks pretty nice. And I did a test, I've got another tray in there that I put the pearl white on to see how it compared to the honey flux. Ooh, this is fun. Ooh. Oh, this is amazing. Okay. So I made a turtle mug with Vermont um, pottery, their tile, their turtle tile. And I'll link that in the description. Um, it was after midnight. I was tired of glazing. <laughs> so I poured Clayscapes Coastal Blue on the inside. And I poured it on the outside to about here. And then in the middle, 
I wiped it back, but I didn't wipe it back hard. And then I put um, deep sea um, celadon amicos on the tail that I sculpted and on the bottom here and up over the, the clayscapes. I probably should stop moving it around. I bet you you'd appreciate that. I'm probably making you dizzy. And then after I um, did two coats of the deep sea, um, actually I'm not quite so sure it's deep sea. It might be, I'll, I'll check and I'll put it in here if it's um, wrong. And then I did some swipes of seaweed. Just one, a couple of swipes all over. This is a winner. To me, that looks like Caribbean Ocean, the South Pacific. That's gorgeous. Woof. Oh, and inside there's a seashell, a little clam shell stamp. This is a hand-built mug with a sculpted handle. So now I have mountains. So I did a couple of different things. This one has got honey flux on the top. It's got the um, holly green and then I did the blue spark. So I wanted to see if that blue spark would give me purples and it did. But I don't quite like the honey flux because I got yellow snow. <laughs> I mean it's okay. It's not quite yellow. More orangey yellow. <laughs> In the crevices but it's in the crevices so that kind of works but um i do like how this blue spark and this holly green melded together it makes it look like the forest is deep back there so that one turned out okay and then this one oh you know what yeah okay Honey flux again on the top. I did blue surf on the mountain this time. And then the holly green. That turned out pretty. I really like this one. Because I'm trying to figure out which one I want to do my mountain teapot. So this one is a refire. Um, in the last firing, um, I had some crawling. And this is the clayscapes glazes. This is the cream. This is cream over the ultraviolet, and then um, the holly green. And the holly green was, I have holly green in brushable, and I have it in um, dip and pour. This is brushing, this is pouring, so this tells me that um, my holly green is probably a little too thin. Um, but I don't mind it, it's just a little different. So I like this one a much, much better than when it first came out. I got a lot more running of the snow, the purple's glossier, not quite so satin. So Clayscapes really does like a cone six. And then this one was the one that um, I had the white um, transfer on. Of course I put the white transfer on white clay, that's not so brilliant. I went ahead and painted the kiwi the Spectrum Kiwi, and didn't do anything else to it and just fired it. So I got more runs with the cream, but I really like this Kiwi, and I didn't get any pinholes here. So I might have gotten a pinhole up there. I am firing in Bab Morta, which is over 40 years old, uh, my Crest Kiln, and it's a kiln sitter, so I can't do a hold unless I'm sitting out here when it shuts off and I hold the button in. <laughs> and um, so, and this was sitting right at the top. So my top's always cooler than my bottom, and my bottom's always cooler. So it might not have gotten enough heat. So we'll try that again. All right, no cracking. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, I don't know, guys. Uh, do I do the stencils or do I do this guy? Or do I do this like for a platter, like serving dish? This turned out really, really pretty. This is the holly green that I just poured it. So, there's a noisy vehicle out there. But I do have a little bit of grinding to do. But even my stamp turned out really pretty. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, you'll have to let me know. Do I stencil them? 
Or do I roll them in that tile? All right, I'm just gonna bring you over just to kind of show you what I did. So excuse the ride. So this is my lazy man's way of doing things. So all of these ran, I might have lost one. I can already see that it moved, it shifted. All of these ran in the firing and I didn't want to grind off the bottoms. They were really jagged and all of that. So I turned them upside down and fired them again <laughs> because I didn't want to go through the work of grinding them. So you can do that. So let's see. So I just have a post. I've got the little, little stilt and I balance it on there. Stilt comes out, I might have to reach my Dremel in there. But now I've got a beautiful little wine goblet or teacup that I don't have to grind. It was a mess. It was like, kind of like that mess that I don't want to do. So to me, it's worth it. Nice. And this is its the other pair. This is the Nebula by Clayscapes. If you don't get this on a cone six, it turns out a very blah, gray blue, which some people like. I don't. I want the little sparkles. I don't know if you can see the little sparkles in. You can see them on the inside, the little mic. There we go. See, look at that yumminess, that micro crystals that start to grow. And all of the, oh, just all those colors. Aren't those pretty? I mean, look at those. Okay. All right. I'll quit fangirling. But when you do, oh, well, maybe, maybe, yeah. When you do a mug, you got to balance that handle just right. And you think you might have it. And, well, so it stuck on one of the, since I pushed these in, um, it stuck on the little, see where it stuck. I can probably grind that off. It'll either be a second or it'll be mine. I keep, my kitchen's full of seconds. You'll have to let me know. If your kitchen is full of really nice stuff that you make, or is it full of all the seconds? Mine's full of the seconds. Eventually, I'll transition. That's the goal to transition out and get some nice stuff in my kitchen. But who knows? All right, so this one didn't work either. So the two mugs didn't work, but I'll have to, <laughs> but I'm worth trying that again. Obviously it fell against the shelf and thank goodness for advancer shelves, I tell you. They pay for themselves. I know they're expensive, but I can't wait till I can buy some more. All right, so this one is, well, it's the lid for the butter dish that needed refired. It had a, it had a bunch of pinholes in it on the cone five. Now it doesn't have any pinholes, but it's got all these little drips. But it's kind of cool because now it's got little feet. <laughs> we'll see if she likes it. This is Savannah's. So we'll see. Everything in here is always an experiment. But I also want to show you, if you have not looked into these advancer shelves, this is the glaze from that lid that fell and bubbled up. And you literally just grind it off. Super cool. All right. This turned out gorgeous. Lynn, if you're watching, this is the oval deviled egg tray. She wants this one. I took the underglaze, um, the royal blue velvet underglaze, and wiped it in, and then or brushed it in, and then wiped it out, and then I put some um, amico sky on it. Here's the amico sky. 
That's gorgeous. Isn't that just a pretty, pretty? And this is the Scandi rolling pin by Clayscapes. That turned out super pretty. And it looks like an egg. A very, very pretty, pretty egg. <laughs> well, that didn't make it. <laughs> well fun anyway I mean some things make it some things don't okay Savannah this is hers and we were really worried the last time she used the midnight rain it ran all the way to the bottom and she's got a lot of grinding to do but we probably could have put a little bit more on this and I think it's the vert luster on the outside but that's really pretty This is Brin's, and it's the cream. It was in the last video, and we wanted more runs. And so we gave it more heat. The seaweed over the cream. That's really pretty. Really pretty. I'm a firm believer that if you're not real happy with the results, do it again. Okay, so this is an oval soap dispenser. And I don't know what's on them. It's Blue Spark and, and Honey Flux. And I think it's over the um, Holly Green. But that Blue Spark came all the way down. Isn't that pretty? God, look at that color. Oof. Look at those little tiny micro crystals. I do have a little bit to grind. But that's not bad. But it feels so good. Oof. And then this is another, this is just clear over, no, I did ice, um, Amico ice over, if you don't, my clear does not like a cone six, it likes to, um, and I might have some in here, I do, I do have some in here. Mine likes to craze or crackle um, at a cone six. I personally think that that's got a great application too and can be super, super pretty. Um, a lot of people don't like that. So since I knew that I was going to a cone six, I did ice because it's a good, it's got a, a little tint of blue in it, um, but it works as a clear. So that worked out really cool. Happy with that, but I'm super happy with this. Oh, okay. This might be the winner. This is Rainforest with swipes of chung plum, seaweed, and ancient jasper. I did it on a rhubarb leaf last summer. That is going in the winter pile. I'm going to be doing this again. No pinholing. I got purples down there in the eggs. Really pretty. These are some more of Savannah's. This is that Lime Shower Mako. And I think she put either Blue Surf on the outside. I think it was Blue Surf. And then this, I think, is the Ancient Jasper. Isn't that a fun shape? She's just playing around. I love it when you just get into the studio and just play. And then these are more savannas. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's seaweed over deep sea. But this, um, I think it's um, northern woods, but I don't know what she's layered it with. I've got to ask her because that is stunning. You know what? It might be the blue surf again because she was playing with blue surf. And we hadn't played with it in a while, and I had to stir it all up and rehydrate it. All right, so this is the smaller tray done like the big tray. I don't see a lot of difference. Um, so this one on top was done with the pearl white. 
and it was the Chung Plum Blue Retail and then Honey Flux and then this one was done with Pearl White. So, um, could be an option because I believe the Pearl White is cheaper than the Honey Flux because I just picked up Honey Flux and I paid $18 for a pint and I wasn't too happy. All right. God, look how gorgeous this is. God, oh, that's pretty. That, can you imagine white and yellow eggs on these? Ha! Huh. So, this is Caroline's. And it's kind of really cool. So it's got like an antique feel to it. She put underglaze in here, wiped it back, and then we just did a clear. And then this is my clear that doesn't tend to like cone six, but that I put it on the bottom shelf because it's cooler. So I don't see any crazing. Though she kind of wants the crazing. <laughs> Cause I told her what would happen. Sometimes that clear, the crazing shows up when it after, afterwards. And then <sighs> she's done a bunch of fun. God, I just love how she paints. So kind of Alice in Wonderland. And then this one, she asked me to put glass. So we melted some blue glass. She's gonna love that. Love that. And then she's been doing some masks. That's super fun. Super, super fun. She's gonna be happy. Happy, I love it when the students are happy with what they make. Cause you know, when you're starting in pottery, first couple of kilns are kind of sometimes disappointing. So these guys are doing awesome. Granted, they've been doing it for a little while. Wait, let me just hold this guy out. So these are a bunch of dishes. When I did the egg trays, they um, are the leftover bits rather than uh, wedge it up and I just I just put in a whole bunch of kind of wanted a quilt kind of batik um, look to them and so I just put in a whole bunch of different colored underglazes and then wiped it back and then they've been dipped in my clear. So I make a bunch of little trinket dishes like this. They sell really well. They're not hard to do. They're, you can put them at a really great price point. Um, these ones were done with a cookie cutter and then I pushed them into foam. But super cute. And I wasn't too particular about how the color went on, so they went super fast. And so a lot of times I will make these, and if someone buys a lot, I let them pick out a couple or, you know, trinket dishes to as a thank you. So that's it um, for this kiln over. I do think this is my favorite. What do you think? Tell me. Wait, which one was your favorite? And I will post some, I'll go take some pictures. I'll get the, I've got the hardware and I will post a picture of what that plate stand looks like at the end. Okay, have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.